Um, I apologize for my voice already because uh, I'm losing my voice a little bit, but it should be good. It's okay, we'll ramp up the mic volume, they'll never know. Yeah, I'll just speak low and sultry into the mic like this. Like you're, like you're doing your Barry White impression. Oh yeah, one of those. <clears throat> <laughs> so well, what has it been like then being part of the Who universe now? Because you've been, the show's now currently awaiting, the sen uh, awaiting whether we're gonna get a second season or not, but the fans' response, what's it like to see such a positive response to the work you've done? It's been wonderful, every, yeah, we, ooh. No, oh, don't lean too far forward. Um, it's but yeah, doing these conventions really um, shows us how much love there is for the show. Um, if we didn't already know it before, it's really wonderful meeting everyone. Just, it's I say it every time we do this, but it's a real blessing to be able to do this and to meet you guys and to just chat with fans. It's really lovely. Yeah, no, it really is. Especially today, for the first time, we've seen a lot of class cosplay which has really made our oh, day. Oh, that's been so. awesome. Yes. Yeah, there's so many, you know, people in class cosplay today, so it's an honor. And we even got to sign like a big Doctor Who poster that oh, had like Tom Baker's autograph on. So to be a part of, you know, even that poster is a privilege for us. And it must be then kind of surreal to actually, as you say, to look at the people that have made and spent a lot of time on their costumes to replicate what the show was like. And then you're there thinking, what do you think in that instance there? What's the first thought that you think when you see someone that's cosplaying as you? It honestly makes my day. I remember I see a Ram cosplay today and I started screaming because I was just so happy to see someone, you know, dressed as Ram. But it just means so much, you know, because we worked so hard on this show and we really wanted to make something special for you guys. And to see that, you know, we've made an impact on so many people is, you know, is a blessing for us. So. Essentially that. It's really, really, really means a lot to us to see people put the time and effort into it. And it, it does take time and a lot of effort and money to, to source all this stuff. Um, so to see the people, it's connected, our characters are connected enough with people that they want to go and dress like them. It's, it's really means a lot to us. It really it does. makes our day. <laughs> and for those that have never, that, that aren't actors, in the audience, what is it like to work on and be part of a major franchise like Doctor Who? Because every acting job is different, but when you're, it must be even more so when you're part of like a huge machine that yeah. is the Doctor Who. Well, I mean, when we all was told that, you know, it's part of Doctor Who, it kind of, it kind of put a lot of pressure on us to do it justice, you know, for the Doctor Who universe. Um, so there definitely was pressure, um, but it sort of helped us as well, you know, just to, you know, it made us really put our heart and soul into it and, you know, try our best to, to create something for Doctor Who fans to appreciate. And I feel like, you know, from speaking to you guys, we really have done that. So it makes our day to sort of, you know, be reminded that we, as our characters and our show has touched people. So thank you guys for real. Yeah, it really ups our game knowing we've got to live up to this huge legacy. Um, and to try and fit into it. And it was really nerve wracking, I think, um, when we got the roles and no, when the announcement was about to go out, we were really worried that people were uh, gonna instantly dislike it because it's, uh, the Doctor Who fan base is so dedicated and so, um, so dedicated to, to, to the show that to give a bit of that away is like handing over your baby. It's, it's, uh, it really meant a lot to have the response from the fans and we really, we really do appreciate it. So we're gonna open the questions to you now. If you'd like to ask a question, feel free to stick your hand up. I can start off with this gentleman here. What was your favorite episode to film in series one? We both have the same, don't we? Yeah, I think it's episode <laughs> six, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Episode six was just, it, it was, it was like doing a, a play on TV. It was just yeah. one big long scene. Um, so when we got the script for that, we really had to do some homework on it because yeah. it's, it, it is just the acting pretty much. Yeah. And it's just a character piece. So um, that was a really interesting challenge for us. And yeah. we had an absolute blast filming it, even though we did go a bit stir crazy by the end of the two weeks. Yeah, I mean, that was one of the only episodes where we all got to be in the same room together for a, for a long period. So you can imagine all the cast was in one room for two weeks and we got work done, but it was a lot of fun. You know, we messed about a lot, but 
it was probably the fun, most fun episode for us to film. And it is my favorite episode of the series. Yeah, same. And we have a question in the middle. Thanks for coming, guys. And um, my question is, um, were you fans of Doctor Who before getting into class? Oh, yeah, um, well, funny enough, I wasn't. Um, I hadn't really, I didn't, I'd, I'd never really watched it, which is a surprise for me. Um, just because I'm a big geek, I love my gaming, I love my anime. Um, so I'd never really watched Doctor Who, funny enough, just because none of my friends have, were in that sort of, in that sort of group. Um, so, I, I mean, I'd seen a few uh, Christmas specials and stuff, but I'd never really had an end to it. Um, so when I got the, the uh, job, I kind of thought to myself, well, why haven't I really gotten into Doctor Who? I've never really sat down and watched it. So, of course, to do my research, I sat down and watched it, and I'm really into it now. So I am a fan now, definitely. Yeah, same for me, exactly. We sort of had to do our research, because obviously being cast in a show, and I remember watching the entire season one you know, in Cardiff and actually really enjoying it. You know, I'd actually can't wait to get home to watch the next episode. So I can really understand why there's such a big market in Doctor Who and why the fans really appreciate it because, you know, and I love Doctor Who fans. I've said it so many times, but the community that Doctor Who fans create is just so special and the passion and, you know, love that you guys have for the show is amazing. So I respect that a lot. And we have a question at the front here. Uh, but, hey. but first, they have some, she has something for you as well, apparently. She's oh, going to oh, give you oh. something. Here we go. Ooh. What's going on? Oh, that's exciting. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, he's got a meteor. meteor. <laughs> oh and I'm sure God. if you've watched class, you can tell this that's is the amazing, amazing cosplay from April. So, yeah. yeah. yeah let's have a round of applause for that. And look at that. We've got a meteor. Got a meteor as well. <laughs> from episode six. That's amazing. That's so cool. Thank you for that. Oh, <laughs> That is so cool. So I don't think I'm going to be able to break confessed. this one, though. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be able to... Uh, the truth's going to come out now, guys. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> What's your truth, Fatty? Go on. <laughs> and what was your question that you had for them? Um, oh, who is the worst for laughing on set? The worst? Yeah. Um, I remember this was actually my first... Uh, you know, there wasn't really something really bad that happened on set. But I remember my first day, um, I had to film the football scenes of me, you know, in the beginning of the episode where we started off with me performing badly first. So I'd done like five hours of, you know, running and, you know, doing all of these, like actually playing bad because this was when I lost my leg. So I had to act like, you know, I didn't know how to play football. And then for the next five hours, I had to perform and act like, you know, this was me doing skills and, you know, running up and down the pitch. And I remember that day, I swear to God, I ran for about nine hours and the next day like I couldn't walk I had to have deep heat like I don't think they took into consideration that I'd be running for nine hours so yeah my first day of filming class I ran for nine hours straight <laughs> um, for me the worst it's, uh, I, 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 there's not really a worst but um, a tricky thing for me was um, it was in episode six funny enough right when I, at the end of the uh, end of the episode because we filmed it chronologically um, so my, all my stuff with the meteor was at the end of the two and a half weeks. Um, so it got to the point where I was having like blood coming out of my nose and out of my eyes and stuff. And it was essentially just one full day of doing my stuff, of me screaming, holding this bloody rock. Um, and every time I had to do a take, I had to lean my head back and like pour this syrupy, gooey blood thing up my nose and it kept going down the back of my nose and dripping down my throat. It was disgusting and I did that about 40 or 50 times throughout that day and I was continuously screaming as well. <laughs> so I, my voice was like getting worse and worse at the end of the day and I nearly lost my voice. Um, so I, I, it wasn't necessarily a, the worst thing but it wasn't pleasant. <laughs> yeah. And we have a question at the front. Hey guys, hoping there is a second season. What? Hoping, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what do, if, is there any monster or, uh, from Doctor Who that you'd like to face? I mean, I know there's the Sleeping Angels yeah. from the end of season one, but is there any like Dalek, da da Cyberman, or anyone else that you'd like to do battle I, with? I'd like to see um, something, not, even, even if it's not necessarily the silence, but the silence would be fun. I think they're really, really creepy, and I love the whole creepy horror aspect of it. 
So something like that for me, I think would be fun. I mean, Patrick's really, you know, he was already making ideas and stuff for season two and the, the premise, you know, with the arrival and, you know, what the, the idea behind season two would obviously be focusing on the arrival. And I feel like that in itself, you know, if all goes to plan, that in itself is going to be amazing. So, yeah. We have another question for our young person in the front. Is there anything you dislike about your characters? Oh, sorry, say. So is there anything you dislike about your characters? Dislike? Yeah, I mean, he is a bit cocky, so yeah, I don't like that aspect, but I think it's interesting because even though, you know, he's a bit cocky, people describe him as a cinnamon roll, um, <laughs> which I'm happy with, because I, yeah. I think that explains him, you know, perfectly, like, you know, on the outer side, he appears to be this tough, you know, cool dude, when really, he's a cinnamon roll, so, yeah. <laughs> Getting his Tumblr names out, that's great. <laughs> um, yeah, I... I I think Charlie's just essentially a part of me that is hidden away. It's like the social anxiety part of me that I've always had and that I've talked myself out of. Yeah, it was just me as a young teenager, essentially, I think, Charlie was. Um, I love him to bits. He's, he's a nutcase. Um, and however morally grey you think he I've, might be. How, how do you feel about the way Charlie is towards the end of the season? Do you not dislike, you know, how he um, becomes? Um, no, I think... I don't think he's got a choice, really. He's got to step up and do the, make the decision that no one else can. I, I, I think... I, I love Charlie to bits. And however, yeah, as I say, how morally grey he is, um, <laughs> he's good at heart. So, yeah, I, like, I love him. And we have got a question from a doctor. Sorry. Uh, what was your first reaction when you realised Peter Capaldi was going to... Oh, so, sorry, sorry, mate, I can't, I can't hear you, sorry. What was your first reaction... Oh, even closer, even closer, sorry. Go on. Uh, what was your first reaction when you found out Pete Capaldi was coming in? Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, it was <laughs> pretty mental. Um, getting to know that we were going to film with yeah. the Doctor. Um, I mean, we'd kind of hoped it was going to happen, but we weren't sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was a real honour for us. And yeah, I, I, I lost it a little bit when I found out. Um, yeah. And to actually work with him was, was incredible. He's um, I've never heard a bad word said against him, really, and I think that's, that's a testament to how wonderful he is as an actor and as a person. He takes the time to get to know you, yeah. to, he knows your name, make sure you're okay. Yeah. He's amazing on set. It's, watching him work is a real joy. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was wonderful. Yeah, honestly, he was one of the nicest people I've worked with. And I remember when we was on set that day, you know, we was told that, you know, Pierre Capaldi was going to be on set and we all had to act like we wasn't going to be starstruck. Um, and I remember meeting him and having to act composed, you know, like this is a normal day for me, but he was honestly the nicest man. I remember him coming up to me and asking me how I was and the conversation didn't end there. You know, he would want to find out more about me and where I've come from and how I'm going to act in. And I really respected that about him, you know, for to be such a huge role model and still take the time out to, you know, care about how people are. I found really, really special about him. And honestly, he's the m pleasurable person to work with, to watch him work. I'm sure we learned so much as well, so it was just a pleasure to be a part of, you know. And a question from the gentleman here. Then. If there's a season two, um, who other than Doctor Who would you like to see back, um, or from the Doctor Who universe, like kind of team up with you guys? Yeah. I remember, well, Greg meant the torture crossing. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd like to see Captain Jack. I think having a bit of a John Barrowman would be really cool, just because that's just like a bit of a fantasy casting, yeah. just to have that come back in. And, I don't know, have that launch another series of Tortured would be fun, yeah. alongside Class would be really cool. Something like that would be really cool for me. Yeah. Yeah, no, for me, the Tortured's been... You know, Captain Jack could be a teacher at the school. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, can you imagine? Amazing. <laughs> a, a history teacher. There we go. Oh dear, I just, all the mischief you get up to. Him and Miss Quill. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I'm sure the Doctor Who franchise has opened up a lot of doors for you guys. What projects are you working on next or upcoming that you can talk about? Well, we're in a bit of a sticky situation with, you know, where class hasn't been confirmed yet. We're sort of limited to what sort of work we can go up for. Um, so we sort of, if we was to work, we'd have to sort of take on smaller roles just in case season two was to happen. Um, 
but at the moment we're just sort of both going up for auditions, pilot season, nothing in the pipeline yet. We're sort of waiting to hear back from class and then we can sort of film class or move on. But hopefully yeah. we film class soon. That's, that's the thing with, uh, we're doing like series like this. You kind of have to very much keep in mind that series may go ahead and we're just hoping to hear very soon. Uh, I mean, there's always uh, things going on in the background, but nothing we can confirm yet, unfortunately. Yeah. And there's lots of lovely props and costumes involved in the show. When, it's, when you finished filming, did you kind of get given anything or did you keep anything? Of yeah, I, I, we, we got given quite a few bits of merch. I've got like a Dalek alarm clock, which I wouldn't recommend. Because Wait, it's I get the most one annoying thing ever. It wakes you up with like exterminate at five o'clock in the morning. You're like, just go. Um, <laughs> and I got like a Doctor Who jumper, and I've actually kept quite a lot of things, like all my call sheets. I've kept all the scripts. I've kept my costume. You know, I'm a bit excited, so I've kept pretty much everything. Yeah, I've, I, I think I nicked um, a sonic screwdriver. I don't think they know about that. Oh, well, oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> there, there was a few of them lying around, so I was like, I'll have that. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, and things like call sheets and stuff, but um, yeah, none, none of the big stuff. Maybe next series we need to go up our get a stealing game. Yeah, let's get a Dalek. Sure, yeah. we, let, we can we dismantle it. We could actually got a Dalek. Each day, get a little bit more out. No. <laughs> let's do it. You'll see the headlines in the news the next day. Dalek know, smuggling Dalek's ring missing. uncovered <laughs> on set of class. Right, I have a question. one final question from our little friend at the front. So, when you read the script for the last episode, when April gets turned into Shadow King, what was, your, what was your reaction? Oh God, that was the funniest reaction. Because we all got it at the same time and everyone was like running around set like, have you read the script? Have you read the script? And I remember seeing that, it was just like, you know. We were filming episode six then, weren't we? When we got yeah. the script for episode eight. Yeah. And yeah, we were, I think we were on our lunch break or something. And um, we were all racing to see who could finish it first. And they were like, oh wait, have you, have you seen what happens at the end? Yeah. Did, yeah. Did the arrivals happen again. We had no happening. idea. Yeah. Um, Patrick hadn't told us anything about what was going to happen at the end of the series, so the big plot twist at the end is um, pretty surprising for us too, and we, we, we lost it a little bit. Yeah, no, we definitely did. I remember I got in trouble as well because there was like, well, like I said, we filmed next to the, the Doctor Who props cupboard, and there was like Daleks and Weeping Angels, and they've been there since the beginning of filming. Only Fatty would do this. For some reason, <laughs> I decided to take a picture of the Weeping Angel, and five minutes later, while we was filming episode six, Derek's pulled me. He was like, what have you done? The Radio Times have posted about you. I swear to God, it was five minutes. The Radio Times are like, oh, are the Weeping Angels coming back to class, blah, blah, blah. And I got in so much trouble, but I genuinely had no idea that they were going to be coming back. And the day that I decided to take a picture of a Weeping Angel is the day that we get the script, so yeah, I just take selfies with everything and I get in trouble. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is all the time we have for our panel today, so please give a massive round of applause. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. Greg and Fatty, and they will be signing in the signing area, which is off to my right over here uh, for the remainder of the weekend, and back with us tomorrow morning at the same time at half 11 as well. Thank so you so, so much. Let's give a big round of applause to our panelists today. Uh, you can keep it. So up next, ladies and gentlemen, we would remind you we are now closing the hall, ladies and gentlemen. So if you'd all please like to leave by the exits at the back, we are closing the hall. Following our hall closure, we will be reopening for our Starsky and Hutch panel, which will commence within the next 15 to 20 minutes. Um, if you would just like to queue outside, there will be a queue forming already. Um, for